For many years, humans have had a great fascination with the events in the sky, observing stars, planets, and the movements of the sun and moon. Over time, the nature of light has been unveiled, and through this observation, we have discovered the true nature of reality. Throughout history, science has made many observations of these celestial phenomena, but perhaps none as fascinating as solar eclipses, moments that, despite their short duration, can completely transform the world. Prepare to observe one of history's unique phenomena. This April 8th, the United States will witness one of those unique moments of solar eclipse that only repeats once every few years. We will learn a little more about this phenomenon and explain how and why it happens. On April 8th, North America will experience its second total solar eclipse after seven years since the last time, which was in August 2017, and before that, it was in 1979. There is no doubt that it is an impressive event, but it also raises the following question, how does a solar eclipse occur? An eclipse occurs when the moon passes over the surface of our sun, hiding the solar surface from our view and casting a shadow over a strip of the earth located below. Along this path, the world will turn as dark as night. In cosmic terms, it is unusual for this to happen. The moon is about 400 times smaller than the sun, but is about 400 times closer to us. This means that when these two celestial bodies are aligned, they appear to be the same size in the sky. Solar eclipses may seem slow, but the moon's shadow moves quickly across the Earth's surface. The speed varies by location. Eclipse calculators estimate that the shadow will move between 2510 and 2574 kilometers per hour across Mexico and over 4828 kilometers per hour as it exits the United States. The eclipse will reach speeds of over 9656 kilometers per hour over the Atlantic Ocean. An impressive speed, but for Americans, where can such an event be appreciated? The event will pass through the North American countries of the United States, Mexico, and Canada. However, this does not mean that all inhabitants will see exactly the same thing in the sky. Known as the Path of Totality, it is the route this astronomical phenomenon will take through the regions stretching from Mazatlan, Mexico, to Newfoundland, Canada, where total darkness of the sun can be experienced. It is estimated that approximately 31.5 million people will be able to see the eclipse in its totality, and the rest of the people will witness it partially. Some of the nearly 500 cities included in the path of totality in the United States are Erie, Pennsylvania, Little Rock, Arkansas, Indianapolis, Indiana, Dallas and San Antonio, Texas, Cleveland and Toledo, Ohio, Buffalo, Rochester, and Syracuse, New York, among others. For Arizonans, the anticipation is bittersweet. Arizona is not on the path of total visibility, but there will be an opportunity to see a partial eclipse in the state. How can I safely watch the solar eclipse? In general, the most advisable way to appreciate the star is to avoid looking at it, especially if you do not have special equipment to protect your eyes. Economical options for viewing the eclipse, such as glasses and paper solar viewers, are recommended. If you are using equipment purchased for a previous solar eclipse, make sure to inspect it. And if any are damaged or scratched, the best thing to do is dispose of them. NASA states that it is not safe to look at the sun through any optical device while using glasses or paper viewers. To view the eclipse through cameras, binoculars, or telescopes, it is advisable to purchase a special solar filter for greater protection. The only time you can look at a solar eclipse without eye protection is during the moments of totality. When the moon begins to reveal the sun's surface again, resume observing the event through protective equipment to avoid injury. How long will it last? At any point along the eclipse path, the phenomenon will last about two hours or more, according to NASA. The duration of totality varies by location. In April, some places will experience this phase for more than four minutes. Others, only for one or two minutes. What happens during the moment of totality? With the start of the partial solar eclipse, the moon will take a small bite out of the sun and then consume more and more of its surface. During totality, the sky will darken as at night and the temperature will drop. Suddenly, faint white threads of light from the sun's outer atmosphere, or corona, 
will be visible. Fortunate observers might even see a thin, pinkish-red circle around the edge of the moon. This is the chromosphere, an atmospheric layer located below the solar corona. Its color is due to the presence of hydrogen throughout the layer. After totality, the sun will slowly peek out from behind the moon, another partial eclipse that will last the same as the first. The moon will continue its path until the sun shines normally in our sky again. How will things change on Earth during the eclipse? As the eclipse approaches its maximum phase, the air will cool, the sky will darken, shadows will become sharper, and you might see images of small crescent moons, projections of the eclipse on them. Along the path of totality, the world will darken as the moon comes into perfect alignment with the Earth and the Sun. Animals will also react to the solar eclipse. Bees will stop buzzing, birds will stop singing, and crickets will start chirping. Some pets may appear confused. Even plants will be affected, as scientists discovered after the solar eclipse of 2017. They have decreased rates of photosynthesis and water loss, although not as extreme as what occurs at night. Despite what is forecast for this April 8th, there is no doubt that apart from being a phenomenon expected to be lived, it will also bring great discoveries for science, just as it did in previous events. For example, in the 19th century, a French astronomer discovered the element helium by studying the spectrum of sunlight emitted during an eclipse. These events also allowed the first scientific observations of coronal mass ejections, violent expulsions of plasma from the solar corona, which can cause power outages and communication disruptions on Earth. Scientists also confirmed Einstein's general theory of relativity, which posits that massive objects curve the fabric of space-time during a solar eclipse in 1919, and there is still much to discover. This April, NASA plans to transport instruments on airplanes to capture images of the solar corona and launch rockets to study how the reduction of sunlight during an eclipse affects the Earth's atmosphere. A radio telescope in California will attempt to use the moon as a shield to measure the emissions from various solar spots. The public will also join in the fun. During the eclipse, a team of amateur radio operators will emit signals throughout the country to study how solar disturbances can affect communications. Along the path of totality, some people will record the sounds of wildlife. Others will use their phones to take pictures of the eclipse and help outline the shape of the solar disk. As we have seen, this is a wonderful event that can only be appreciated once in a while. It is predicted that the next total solar eclipse will not occur in seven years like this one, but will not occur until 2045. But until then, all we can do is enjoy this event. And you, are you ready to appreciate this total solar eclipse? And how do you do it? Let us know in the comments section. Thank you for watch. Please subscribe for support the channel. If you like the video, give it a like and share with your friends.